On stage four, Tade Pugacha, he did what he expected himself to do, he did what he wanted to do, and he also did what the others feared he would do, and that is attack on the Galibio. And it wasn't simply just an attack by the man himself. If we take a look at a series of clips, it was the teamwork that was on display. Now, it was a headwind for a lot of the Galibio. Jonas Vinegard was tracking the UAE riders closely, then realised he was catching a little bit more wind. So we're going to see him ease out to his right, the left-hand side of the picture, and he goes in search of Tadej Pogacar. So he says, I'm a bit too far forward just here. So he just swings out, and then he starts to take a look around into the eyes of his rivals. He realises Tadej Pogacar is a bit further back, checking on the whereabouts of the likes of Evenepoel and Roglic, and then slots himself back in position, catching a little bit less wind, a little bit more protection, but at this point still in front of Tadej Pogacar. So Pogacar opened up the gap for him, let his major rival come back in between, and in the meantime, the UAE train just rolled on. Now, talking about that, I mean, absolute superstar lineup that UAE have got here in this tour, and climbing powerhouse that it is, using Juan Ayuso, Joe Almeida, Adam Yates. The rest of the team had already lit things up and wrote, ridden a really strong pace on the lower slopes of the Galibier, and they just kept ramping up that intensity, thinning out the bunch. I mean, this, the speed that you see on the screen belies how difficult that this climb is. So it got rid of all the other domestiques just about, except for the likes of Mikel Lunder, but it was all the UAE team in control. And Tade Pogacar able to just sit in the wheel rather than trying to do the damage himself. We did start to wonder, however, would the attack come at all? Being a headwind and waiting for the steeper slopes, Tadej Pogacar chose to go late, 840 metres before the top, in fact, on the steeper slopes of the Galibier. Altitude as well, 2,642 metres. The air is thin, oxygen not readily available. That had everybody on their hands and knees. And when Pogacar went, Immediate reaction from both Vinegard and Remco Evenepoel. Evenepoel realised quickly he couldn't match them, and Vinegard then, he had to let the gap open up just metre by metre as they approached the top. It was a real tug of war between Pogacar and Vinegard that Pogacar was steadily winning, eking out a gap as he got to the top of the climb of around eight seconds. Now, a lot of question marks were there about how good Vinegard and how brave Vinegard was going to be on the descents. Looking back to that nasty crash involving himself, Remco Evenepoel, Primoz Roglic back in the Tour of the Basque Country in April, we thought that maybe Jonas Vinegard might be a little bit hesitant in the descent, and I'm absolutely certain that is something that Tadej Pogacar was also relying on, that if he could get a gap over the top, that he would just have to dare Vinegard to take the risks necessary to try and catch him, and that's where he could even potentially open up a bigger gap. Wet corners as well. Now, Pogacar, he sailed through there, slight adjustment of line, but very, very smooth, 100% committed. When we see Jonas Vinegar come in the same corner, leans it over, you just see that twitchiness, the knee come out a bit further, adjusting his line once he's already on that wet patch. And that's the type of thing that just lets that gap open a little bit more, a little bit more. Vinegar would then eventually be caught by the rest of the chasing group, in court, including Remco Evenepoel, who would take the rest of the bonus seconds on offer. Ayuso, importantly, in front of Roglic and Vinegar, mopping up the last bonus seconds and protecting his lead at Tadej Pogacar. So he has really struck a big blow, not a knockout blow by any means in this Tour de France after just four days, but a healthy lead for Tadej Pogacar and the UAE team plan, well, it went perfectly.